All right, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about measuring public opinion, so let's do it. All right, so this is something that seems to be in the news all the time, and that is public opinion polls or other measurements of public opinion. So you'll hear on the news all the time, 48% of Americans, blah, 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 and they make a claim. Well, can we trust these polls? That's what really what the next video is about. This video is about where does that data come from? Uh, so what does it mean to be a scientifically valid public opinion poll? As well as what are some alternative ways that opinion is measured in the United States? So our most basic one is just a public opinion poll. These are surveys of citizens and it's designed to get their opinion on a certain subject. It could be about who somebody's voting for, their opinion on the legalization of marijuana or on some other political issue. But that's a public opinion poll. Now they don't ask everybody. They take a sample of the population. We're gonna talk more about that later on in this video. So another common type of poll is known as a tracking poll. And this just tracks the daily rise or fall in support for a particular candidate or maybe a politician. So a very common tracking poll is the question, do you approve of the job that the president is doing? Something to that general effect. And then you track progress and you say, all right, this week the president's approval rating is up or it's down. So that's a tracking poll. It goes throughout time asking the same exact question over and over. We can measure opinion that way. We also have something known as a benchmark poll. This is a poll that a candidate who is thinking about running for public office, so notice they haven't started running yet, they might issue a benchmark poll. And so what this does is it's a way for them to gauge their support before they have begun campaigning. So they want to see, all right, where am I? How many people know my name? What do they like about me? What do they not like about me? What do they associate with me? And so you want to try to figure out, do I have a viable chance to run a campaign? And so often these are done in the beginning, the pre-stages, before you actually run for office. And that, that's a benchmark poll. Another type of poll are exit polls, and sometimes they can be entrance polls. So we'll call that entrance or exit polls. And these are taken on the day of the election. So whereas a tracking poll or other opinion polls might be used to try to predict outcome ahead of time, to say, all right, you know, two months before the election, who would you vote for? This poll is different because it is asking people who they did vote for or who they're about to walk into the precinct and who they're going to vote for. So this one has a couple of advantages. One is only people who are actually voting are part of this because it is a survey of people who did vote. And it's used, again, to try to predict the election outcome before the votes have actually been counted. So you get an idea of the demographics. Who are the people who are showing up to vote? Which polling precincts have higher or lower voter turnout than would be expected? And we can kind of predict using our information the demographics of the support for a candidate or his or her party and figure out, all right, this is good information for candidate A, bad news for candidate B, though. The last one we're going to deal with is actually something a little bit different. So whereas those others are mass surveys, so you're asking hundreds or sometimes into the thousands of people, Sometimes you want some more detailed information, and so you might do something called a focus group. Now, this is going to be a small group of people or voters, whoever it is. Um, this is not scientific. So when we talk about the elements of a scientifically valid public opinion poll momentarily, that's not what we're talking about here. There isn't a random sample, um, all of those things. That's not the case here. So what's happening, though, the advantage, because it's not scientific and there's not the random sample, all of that, the advantage, though, is you can have very detailed feedback and response from people and you can really see what they think in a lot greater detail than just asking do you approve or disapprove of this person do you think we should do this policy or not you can actually hear what the people say they speak in this group and again it can give that type of research and can be a very powerful tool sometimes for politicians who are in office or those who are running for office uh, i like to tell this story of mitt romney when he was running for president and they had a focus group, and that focus group came back and told Mitt Romney's campaign staff basically what the result was, was they kind of liked Mitt Romney, but they didn't like him when he wore a tie. He looked too businesslike. They wanted him to be more real and natural. And guess what the Romney campaign started doing? They started having Mitt Romney wear jeans. He often would still wear a tie, but a lot of times he wouldn't have the tie, or he'd roll up his sleeves. He'd wear blue jeans with his shirt, and that is something that helped him apparently, according to this focus group. So it can provide useful information. 
Now, there are a number of factors that affect the results of a public opinion poll. So now we're kind of coming back to the idea of polling. Uh, whether people have any knowledge of the topic, because sometimes people will lie and pretend like they have an opinion even when they don't. The wording of the question matters. So if it's asked in a perhaps leading way, or if it's making something sound more positive or negative, then that can matter as well. The answer choices. So approve, disapprove versus rating it as excellent, good, fair, or poor. That can also matter. And the timing of the poll matters as well. It's important to remember that opinions are not stable. They change over time. So it wouldn't be very valid to bring up a poll from 1987 as proof that Americans all believe something. Like, no, nah, that was a long time ago. Opinions have certainly changed since then. All right, so what about a poll will make it valid scientifically? Well, for one thing is that we need to have a random sample. This is the idea that every single person in the population has an equal chance of being selected for the poll. So this cannot be an online poll, it can't be a Twitter poll, it can't be a straw poll where it's people at the county fair. It needs to be in some kind of method where you are randomly contacting people. So random number generators, that kind of thing, uh, would help to get, make this sample more random. Now, I use the word population in the definition for random sample. Population just refers to the entire group. So, if we are trying to find out who is going to win in the 2020 election, we don't want to poll a sample of all Americans, or even all voting age Americans, but rather we're trying to have a sample of likely voters, because that's really our population, the people who are going to show up and vote in November 2020. So again, something that's difficult but important to keep in mind. Now, in addition to our sample being random, it also needs to be stratified. And so this is the idea that we're going to break up our sample into different demographic categories to ensure that our sample reflects the population as a whole. So for example, you could have a random sample of likely voters and just coincidentally end up with 65% Republicans, 25% Democrats, 10% Independents. Now, is that going to give you a very accurate reflection of the American voting public in general? And the answer is no. It's going to be a lot closer to about one-third Democrat, about one-third Republican, and about one-third Independent. So you need to make sure that when you are sampling people, even though it's randomly, you have to make sure that you have about the right number of Democrats, Republicans, Independents, about the right number of men or women, of people of different religious faiths, or of different socioeconomic backgrounds, or educational levels, all of these things matter and are important in making sure that your results are as accurate as they possibly can be. And it's also important that we have a large enough sample size. So we have a valid sample size in the United States if you're polling like the entire US, the idea is about 1500 people is enough to be scientifically valid. So that's all you need. Somewhere between 1000 to 1500 people and that is a valid sample size for the United States. Now the thing is, you didn't ask every single person. So that is going to lead to something known as a sampling error. Now this does not mean that the pollster did anything wrong. They did everything right. It's random, it's you know stratified, all of those things. But the fact that they didn't ask every single person is going to lead to having this sampling error. So this just arises from asking a sample of the population rather than the population. And an acceptable sampling error is known as a margin of error of plus or minus 3%. So it's the idea that you've done everything right, and then you'll see this little plus or minus 3%. And what that essentially means is basically that. If let's say that the poll says candidate X has 57% of support, that's really high, um, it could be as high as 60% or as low as 54%. So all of that would fall within the sampling error. So what you're doing is acknowledging the fact that, you know what, we didn't ask everybody. So yeah, maybe it's possible that we just happened to sample more people who believed this way this particular time, or maybe fewer. So you end up with this little error, plus or minus 3% is a valid, a scientifically acceptable margin of error. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, can you trust opinion poll results when you see them? Stick with me for that. Until next time, this has been a La Money Production. All right, thanks again, guys, for watching this video. I appreciate it so much. Hit that like button, subscribe for me if you appreciate the content that I'm putting out for you. See you guys next time.